Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There's a word that the Bible uses in describing Esau. That word is the word profane. Profane. That word profane, it means lack of regard or to disregard or to lack devotion for sacred things. In other words, when someone is being oppressed by the profane spirit, that person will have no regard for sacred things. We have no regard for the things of God. We'll treat God's things lightly. When someone tells you, oh, we are on a 40-day fasting and prayer in our church, uh, someone operating under the profane spirit might respond, uh, all the fasting that you did last year, where did it get you? <laughs> it's a profane spirit. It's a profane spirit that mocks what God has promised to do in the life of the believer. And the believer can fall into the snare of allowing that spirit to surreptitiously creep into their lives. And that's one of the things that we want to guard against during this shutdown, during this pandemic. This pandemic has made many Christians to, go cold, to grow cold and has allowed the profane spirit to creep into their lives where they really no longer believe God for the things that God has said, for the promises that he has made. And so it's so important that we keep our spiritual fire burning, that we are always on our spiritual toes, so that we don't allow the profane spirit, the spirit that makes you to lack devotion for spiritual things, to have regard for spiritual things. You don't allow that spirit to come into your life. That was the spirit that was operating in Esau. And that was why God said, Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved. And people always say, but this was before they were born. Why would God say such a thing? But the, the, boy, the boy has not even done anything evil. No, it's because, you know, God is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows the end, even from the beginning. So he already knew that Esau will be a profane person. He will be someone who will have no regard for his birthright. He will be someone who will have no regard for the things of God. God said, don't marry from that place. God already knew that Esau was going to marry exactly from the place that God had forbidden, just to bring pain and sorrow to his parents. So that's why God said already, even before he was born, that Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved. So it's my prayer for you that that profane spirit will not find its way into your life. It will not find its way into your home. It will not find its way into the lives of our children. Uh, the spirit of this age is so powerful that if we are not on guard, that spirit uh, that, that makes people to be profane can easily come upon our children where they have no regard for spiritual things. So watch out for it. And that is why, by the grace of God, we have put things in place in ICCLA to ensure that you guard against this spirit. If you know you have not joined any of the live transformation groups, please join them. I keep saying this every time. That is how to keep the profane spirit away. That is how to keep your faith in God going. If you know you are not in a, you have not been joining the hotline to heaven, make sure you join the hotline to heaven prayer. You know we are on our 40-day fasting and prayer. Make sure you are a part of it. Youth Nation, our youth they have, a, they have a, a, a group where they, they do their own stuff. So if you know your son or your daughter is not part of them, let them know. Make, that, make sure that they join. These are the things that God has put in place for you, for your family, so that this spirit will not be able to creep into your home. The uh, night of prophetic prayer power on Thursdays, don't miss it. That is the time we intercede. That is the time we, prof we prophesy to ourselves using God's word. So make sure don't miss out on any of these things. This is how to guard against this spirit. Hallelujah. Welcome again to your year of open doors. The year that God has opened doors, all manner of doors unto you. 
doors of healing, doors of deliverance, doors of prosperity, doors of deeper relationship with God Almighty. It's your year of open doors. Now, I told you last Sunday that even though Jesus said, I have set before thee an open door, but you have to enter through those doors. Until you enter through those doors, the fact that Jesus has set open doors will make no difference in our lives. We have to be able to enter through those open doors. And the enemy knows that Jesus has set before us open doors. You know, he knows the scripture. That's why Paul said, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. But there are many adversaries. So the enemy will want to see to it that we do not enter through the open door that God has opened unto us. And it is our responsibility to make sure that the enemy does not stop us. The enemy will not stop you from entering into your open doors this year. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Genesis 4, 6 to 7, the story, you know the story of Cain and Abel, the offering of Abel had been accepted by God, but the one of Cain had been rejected by God, and Cain was very jealous of his brother, and he decided that he would kill him, and so he lured him into the field. Now, the title of this message is, The Doors That We Must Shut. For those of you who are taking notes, the doors that we must shut. There are doors that we have to shut uh, in, in order not to be distracted, in order not to be lured or be deceived by the enemy and be derailed from entering the door that Jesus has opened for us. There are certain doors that you have to shut in your life. There are doors that I have to shut in my life. You can't have those doors open and yet be able to enter into the doors that Jesus has opened. I will show you why it's not possible. And so in this story, the Bible says that Cain had led his brother, Abel, into the field to kill him. And God saw that, and God spoke to him, to Cain, to see whether he might change his mind. He said, God warns Cain that if you do not do what is right... Sin is crouching at your door and that it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now, this was the first time that that word door was used in scripture. He says, sin is at your door. I want you to see the picture in your mind. Sin is depicted as a predator, as a ferocious animal that is crouching at the door waiting for you to open that door and once that door is open, sin is going to leap through that door and pounce on you. That was what God was telling Cain. God was telling Cain that there is a door. If you don't shut that door, sin is crouching by that door. If you open, if you keep that door open, sin is going to leap through it and pounce on you. That was the warning God gave him. Of course, you know this story. Cain did not shut that door. His anger, his jealousy against his brother continued. And he eventually killed him. He didn't rule over it. Sin took over. The same thing this year for you and I. Every single day that you wake up, I can assure you that sin will always crouch at various doors of your life to make sure that you open that door so that once you open that door, he's going to leap through that door like a ferocious animal and pounce on you. So it is important that we make sure that all these doors are closed this year. It is my prayer that God will give you grace to close this door. There are doors that must be shut this year so that the enemy will not be able to destroy us because once the enemy is able to destroy you, you won't be able to enter into the open door that Jesus has for you. And that's what the enemy wants to do. So we have to watch, we have to guard against it. The first one I want to talk about is the door of your lips. The Bible talks about the door of our lips. Your lips, has, has, your lips have doors. 
Psalm 141, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 141, verses 1 through 4. I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in wicked deeds. Keep watch over the door of my lips. He said, Lord, come quickly. Come quickly. David knew the urgency. And that urgency, I want to urge on you also this year. That you need to pray this prayer with urgency. The Father, this year, ha, keep watch over the doors of my lips. Because if the doors of your lips are not guarded, even though Jesus has opened many doors unto you, he said, yes, behold, I have set before you open doors. You won't be able to enter. The doors of your lips can keep you from entering into the open door that Jesus has set before you. The Bible says that the children of Israel, God has given them their enemy in Canaan. God has given them the enemy in Canaan. So go there and possess the place. Go there and possess the place. Even though there may be giants there, who it doesn't matter. I have already given you the place. The place is yours. I swore to your forefather that it belongs to them. So just go take it. But then the Bible says when the spies came back, they said, oh, we went there. We saw the children of Anak there. They were, they were huge. They were giants. And we, they, we were like grasshoppers in their eyes. Even in our own eyes, too, we were like grasshoppers. Even in our own eyes. We are not able to take it. We are not able to take over the land. Even in the wilderness, when they were in the wilderness and they were complaining and saying that God has come here to kill them and all that, the Bible said that God heard it and said, those of you who have been complaining that you can't enter the land that I brought you here to kill you, okay, I, just as you have said, I have heard. You will not enter that land. You will die here in this wilderness. You won't enter. That door that I've opened for you to enter into a land flowing with milk and honey, because of what you have said, you won't enter. It is your children that will enter. Those children that you said are going to die with you here, they won't die with you here. You will die here, as you have said with your mouth, but those children, they won't die here. I will make sure that they enter through the door. But what you have said with your mouth, that will happen to you. So this year, it does not matter what is coming at you. You must hold on to God's promise. The door that God has opened for you this year, you must be insistent, you must be persistent, you must continue to confess it, that this is the door that the Lord has opened unto me this year. I am entering through it. You must not allow the doors of your lips to open to say things that will nullify what God has for you this year. Very important. You have to guard the doors, the doors of your lips. It does of your lips. And it is not something you can do in your own power. That was why David had to cry to God. David knew that his willpower could not do it. He knew that only God could help him. And because we have the Holy Spirit now inside of us, you can call upon the help of the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, help me. You know I talk too much. Help me. You know my faith is just so weak. Before anything happens, I will begin to talk all kinds of negative things. There are some things that will happen that will just make you begin to say things and begin to talk negatively. Even though you have attended the service today, even though you have heard the word of God, even though you have been motivated, even though you have been encouraged, even though you have been enriched, but as soon as you leave this place, as soon as you shut down your TV, those of you who are watching online, and you just go back to your old ways of complaining, you just go back to your old ways and say, well, I don't know whether this is going to happen. You know this all happened yesterday. You just go back as if you have not attended church today. Keep watch. Keep guard. Keep watch over the doors of your lips. Help me tell your neighbor. Watch your lips, my friend. Watch the doors of your lips. Watch the doors of your lips. Watch the doors of your lips. And then the second door I want to warn you about is the door of your heart. 
the door of your heart. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. The Amplified Classic says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard. For out of it flow the springs of life. Keep and guard your heart. The doors of your heart, keep and guard them. Because everything that you are going to do, they are going to flow from your heart. Everything that you do starts from your heart. And if you don't guard the doors of your heart and you allow things to go there, it, can, it will rob you of your faith in God. It will rob you of your trust in God. If you don't guard your heart, the things that you allow to go in there, it will draw you into sin. It will make you do things that you shouldn't do. And it will make you not see the door that Jesus has opened for you. So it is important to guard the doors of your heart. Passion, sinful passion comes from the heart. Sinful passion. And when the enemy wants to destroy people, he gives him, when they open, when you open the door of sinful passion, don't forget that sin is crouching at the door. It's crouching at that door. Once you open that door to sinful passion, it leaps and pounds on you. Before you know it, you are on your way to destruction. You know the story of Am Am uh, Amnon? The son of one of the sons of David. He was the one who had a sinful passion towards his half-sister, Absalom's full-blooded sister. And then he raped her. Then Absalom heard about it, the brother of Tamar. But Absalom, the Bible says, did not say yea, nay, yea, did not say nay. Absalom kept quiet. Absalom planned to kill him because of what he did to his, to his sister. So Absalom planned and said he was doing a feast for all of the king's children and he invited everybody to come and Amnon went too. That is what sinful passion does. Sinful passion will destroy your life. It's a door. God has opened unto you various doors this year that you should enter into. Doors that will give you peace. Doors that will give you joy. Doors that will prosper you. Doors that will increase your wealth. Doors that will increase your health. All those doors are open. But the enemy doesn't want you to enter into any of them. He wants to destroy you. And so, if any of these doors, you have to check which doors are open in your life that you must shut. If you don't shut them, sin is just crouching there and waiting for you to open that door so that it can jump in. That was what happened to Amnon. Absalom himself, the door of inordinate ambition. The Bible says he wanted to take over the kingdom from his father. He would go and sit by the gate. So that when people were coming to give to tell to ask David the king to settle their quarrels, Absalom will, in, he will intercept them and said, Oh, don't worry, let me listen to your kids. What happened? Then the Bible said that he will, he will endear himself to their hearts. And they began to take cases to him. So he was getting, the Bible said he was stealing the heart of Israel after himself. But you know what happened? He died because he was hung on a tree when, during the rebellion. The enemy wanted to kill him. They, that door was open in his life. Door of inordinate ambition. He didn't close it. But the enemy sin was waiting at the door. He knew that I would kill this boy in his youth. Meanwhile, Absalom was a very handsome man. By the way, the Bible described him. Very handsome man. Great potential. David loved Absalom over and above all of his children. In fact, when he drove David away from the throne... <laughs> David loved this boy so much, even though he was the most wicked of all his children. Yet David loved him so much. He drove David the father away from the throne. When Joab, the, um, the head of the army, when they eventually, they finally, when he, when he killed, when, when um, Absalom was killed, and Joab sent a message to David that Absalom is dead. They said, David tore his clothes, put ashes on his head. I was crying, oh, Absalom, my son. Oh, Absalom, my son. I should have died in your place. Joab said, what? What kind of thing is this? So we, that were, that, that your son wanted to kill, and we risked our lives for you. You are saying that you could have died in the place of Absalom, your son? Joab was very angry at David. So you can see the potential. 
if Absalom had been alive, I wouldn't be surprised if David wouldn't have handed him over the kingship. Absalom had a great future before him. But that door of inordinate ambition, it was not closed. The enemies leapt through it and slaughtered him, hung him on a tree. That's what happens. When you don't close the door, sin is crouching. Just wait. I don't know which door in your life that you need to close today. And that's why God is warning you that sin is, wa- is waiting for you. It's just waiting and crouching like a lion, like a ferocious animal just waiting for you. Waiting to see whether that door is going to remain open and waiting for the opportunity to leap. Judas was among the this, uh, apostles. He was named with the twelve. He had the privilege, the greatest privilege that any human being on earth could have. He walked with the Lord. He ate with the Lord. In fact, he was a treasurer for the Lord Jesus. He was numbered among the twelve. But there was a door in his life that he did not shut. And God gave him time. Judas was a thief. He was covetous. The Bible says he used to dip his hand into the treasury. He was the one carrying the money bag for the Lord. You know, the Lord used to travel with his people all over the place. So the money bag, it was with Judas. Meanwhile, Jesus, being God himself, he knew that Jesus was a thief. He knew, I'm, I'm sure every single day that Judas stole money, Jesus knew exactly how much he has taken today. But was waiting for him to repent, to close that door. He did not. He did not close the door. Even when he went and told the people that, yes, I will sell Jesus to you. Just give me the silver. Give me the pieces of silver. I will, I will betray him. At the time that they were having their feast, Jesus was saying, it, will be, it is better for the person who is going to betray me for him not to have been born. Uh, it is better for him to put a millstone around his neck and be drowned in the sea. Even when the Lord was saying this thing, that the one who is dipping his, his, his bread in the wine, in the soup with me, is the one who will betray me. Even when the Lord was saying all this, to make Judas know that I know is you. Stop this thing. Don't do it. That door of covetousness, that door, he didn't close it. Then the Bible says, and Satan entered him. The sin that was crouching at the door, all this while, that door was not closed. Eventually, he ran out of grace. Satan entered him. I don't know which door you have to close today. God is talking to somebody. God has been waiting for you to close that door. To close that door. This is your year of open doors. But you've got to close this one. There are doors that you have to close. Okay? There are doors that you have to close. And God is waiting for you to close that door because sin is crouching at the door waiting to pounce. Before I conclude, the last door I want to mention, the love of the world. That one concerns all of us. The love for this world. The way the world is going, brethren, let me tell you the truth. The way the world is going, Things are going to get worse. The Bible says, as we get nearer to the time that our Lord will come, the love of people is going to wax cold. Children are going to be more rebellious against their parents. People are going to be betraying one another. There will be no more love. That the love of the love for God will begin to grow colder and colder and colder. That evil will begin to increase. That they will say good is evil. They will say, oh, evil, no, this is good. Then they said, as the time gets nearer and nearer for the coming of the Lord, you will see that Christians will begin to fall away. They'll begin to fall away. They'll begin to fall away. That is the surest sign that the Lord is on his way. They'll begin to fall away. The love, they will be sucked in by the world. You've got to close that door. God's people, you've got to close that door. The love of the world is not the love of God. It is enmity with God. If you love the world, then you are in enmity with God. It means you are in battle with God himself. You've got to close that door. 
If you love the things of the world, you love the ways of the world, you love the dressing in the world, you love the music of the world, you love everything that is anti-God in the world. You love to do it, even though you know that, about this they are dressing. It's, 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 it does not glorify God. About this they are music. Ah, ah, what this fellow is singing. This doesn't glorify God, but you love it. You love it. You love all the names, the celebrity names. You love all the names. And when they do their show, maybe during Super Bowl, and they do their show, and they remove all the, all the, all, all the, all the things that is covering them. You are, oh, you are looking. You are, ah, this is great. You love it. You are in enmity with God. You've got to close that door. You've got to love what God loves and hate what God hates. I close with this. How do you get these doors closed? You know, I said it before. It's not going to be by your power. This is how it get, you get it closed. Proverbs 8, 34 to 36. Proverbs 8, 34 to 36. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, they harm themselves. All who hate me love death. So how do you close the doors? By being at God's doorway. Learn to be at God's doorway every day. Watching daily at my doors. Watching daily at my doors. Waiting at my doorway. When you are always at the doorways of God. When you are always waiting at the doorways of God. And you are watching daily at his doors. All those things I told you to connect yourself to. Those are the ways to watch daily at the, at the doors of God. Those, those things that I told you to join, the things I told you to do, those are the ways to wait at the doorway of God daily. With that, all those doors, you'll be able to shut them effortlessly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are listening to me today, and you have this door, particularly the door of secular humanism or secularism where you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, where you still believe that it is your own deeds that will get you saved, or where you believe that you don't need salvation, the door of unbelief or the door of rebellion against God, you have to shut that door this morning. And so if you are listening to me and you want to shut that door, this is your time. This is your time to shut that door and receive Jesus Christ into your life. So if you are here today, you want to give your life to Jesus. Those of you who are watching me online, just say with me, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash them away with your precious blood. I receive you into my life today. The door of salvation that you opened unto me I enter into it right now. Thank you for writing my name in your book, your book of life. Dear Holy Spirit, come into my life. I receive you by faith. Thank you, Father, for making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said those prayers, I welcome you to the households of God. You are now born again. You are now a child of God. You know, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except he's born of the water and of the spirit of God, he can't enter into it. But now you are born again. Now you are truly a child of God. Get in touch with us, write us, email us on any of our social platforms, social media platforms, and we'll uh, send you some gift that will help you to grow in your journey with Christ. Or if you are here in the Los Angeles area, uh, visit us. Uh, once, once this pandemic is over, visit us and we'll be able to see you. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home.